Hello everybody, Tahoe Yak Fishery here. So it turns out that yesterday, a year ago, is when this kayak was delivered. And so I have an idea about a video I'm going to make. I store this in my backyard and I store it just like this. And I am going to show you how easy it goes together uh, and I'm going to kind of make a case for why uh, you guys should build your own electric kayak. You know, if you found this video or got this far, it's probably something that you're interested in, and I am here to tell you that you should go for it. This is a 2021 uh, Wilderness Systems Recon 120. Uh, I bought the version without the pedal mechanism. Now, one thing I'm going to point out is that I have not... Uh, impeded the pedal mechanism. I haven't mounted anything on it. I haven't messed with it. I want the option to put the pedal mechanism in if I ever wanted to. Now, I don't think I would go that route. I think that this kayak is intended for a motor and I think it really excels at having a motor. So, um, storing it in my backyard, this is how uh, I store it. You can see there is not much stuff uh, on it. Uh, it gets snowed on and that sort of thing. Um, it seems to be holding up just fine. Um, but it only takes four components to have this thing ready to be motorized on the water. So let's take a look at those four components. Okay, here we go. So uh, I have the trolling motor. I have the battery, I have the control box, and I have the seat. Now, um, one of the reasons that I think that this is a worthwhile endeavor versus buying one that's already built with a motor and so forth. Now, all of these motors are very durable, right? And all of these batteries are pretty durable as long as you don't hook them up backwards or do something weird like that. But if something happened to this motor and I was out of town on a fishing trip, every Walmart, Sportsman's Warehouse, whatever, is going to have a trolling motor in stock that I could use. Same with the battery. Now, this is a lithium iron phosphate battery, and one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to take it in real quick and hang it from my bike scale to show you guys how lightweight it is. Now... This is an expensive battery. It's a 100 amp hour, but it is the size of a Group 27. If I were to leave this behind or drop it in the lake, same thing. Every Walmart or Sportsman's Warehouse or store like that is going to have a Group 27 something that I could put in this kayak and it would go. Now, this is the PWM that I build, and I'm real confident in its performance. Um, but hypothetically, I could have left the head of the trolling motor on, or I could have used the switch that's inside of it to make a second remote that same thing in a failure situation. Uh, with SAE plugs being what connects it to the kayak, I could come up with a substitute. I could come up with a substitute pretty easy. And then here's the seat. This is the seat that is provided by Wilderness Systems. Um, you know, one of the concerns everybody had with this kayak early on was this seat does not go up and down. Um, it is in a terrific location and does not need to go up and down. So that's what we're going to install first. Hang on. Okay, guys, here we go. We've got uh, two thumb screws, one there and one there it slides into little notches back here uh it takes just a minute to install now my pwm has a kill switch but i don't always it attaches to my life jacket i don't always wear my life jacket attached to the seat is a sup leash and i wear the sup leash no matter what so if i fall out of the kayak and that motor's on the kayak is not getting away from me okay so now we're going to put the motor on let's go grab the motor Okay, so here we have the Wilderness Systems uh, transom mount for a trolling motor that allows you to use the factory trolling motor clamp, 
prevalent uh, on all of the motors this size. Uh, I have Dyneema steering line. These are the same ones I built it with. 1.3 millimeter has a, you know approximately a 600 pound braking strength. Uh, here's that steering arm that I built with a Yakima snap around bracket. Uh, and then we're going to come up and take a look here. I put a an eye bolt through here and am using a block purchase method of uh, having it pull from both sides. That does a few things. It makes it makes it the leverage ratio better, so it's easier, less pounds of force required to lift it, but it also keeps it lifting straight, keeps the motor from wanting to flop. Now, uh, I'm gonna talk about motors for a minute. This is a 45 pound thrust uh, from uh, Newport Vessels. It would be interchangeable with the Minn Kota, and the reason that I'm using this size is number one, when you go bigger, even to a 50, the as the size of the motor gets bigger, the thing gets heavier, it's harder to make the hoist mechanism and so forth, and the steering all work smoothly. 45 seems to be a good size. It's powerful. It pushes this large kayak at four miles an hour at full speed, no problem, all day long. Uh, and the hoist and so forth works really well. So that's the reason I'm gonna stick with this size. I think it's a very good size for a kayak. Now we have a couple of pulleys, stainless steel pulleys, and they, uh, there's a pulley right there. It goes through a um, pad eye to keep it kind of out of the way. And it is out of the way. I wouldn't change a thing. It pulls the motor up spectacular. I can put my crate in the back. I can put my wheels on the back of the kayak and nothing gets in the way. So um, I'm kind of doing this with my phone. So let me pause it and hoist it up and show you guys how it works. Okay, so here's the block. We're gonna grab a hold of the cord here and pull. The motor's coming up out of the water and it goes all the way up. Uh, it can actually even go up farther, but as you can see, that motor is completely out of the water. Okay, two of our four components are installed. Let's go get the PWM. Okay, here's our PWM installed. Uh, still using the RAM components. We have a RAM ball replacing the thumb screw for the chair, uh, the medium sized arm. Uh, and a ram ball, adhesive ram ball on the bottom of the PWM. This is the, this PWM has been on the kayak for quite some time. I would say probably 150-ish hours of use. Okay, it's starting to look like a motorized kayak. We only need one more thing, and that's going to be the battery. Let's go get the battery. Okay guys, my dog is very curious as to what's going on here. So, um, 100 amp hour uh, VMAX tanks, lithium iron phosphate battery hanging on the scale, 23 and a half pounds. Pretty impressive weight. Uh, all right, let's go put it in the boat. Okay guys, so the fifth component really is your wiring harness. This is all internally wired, and I have videos on how I did it if you are interested. But this isn't really a, a failing component. If you do it right the first time, it's going to continue to work. Uh, we have a circuit board. Here is where our Group 27 battery resides, and it's not mounted to the floor. It's got a piece of pool noodle to keep it located it's mounted by this um anchor right here that anchors the uh the strap so let's put it in and i'll show you how that goes okay so there's our battery installed and our kayak is ready to fire up let's just uh start off here by dropping the motor We've got the cord that we pull up. That's going to release there. That's going to go down here. Now, you guys, I've talked about this before. Um, I stand by how good it works. I got rid of the reverse lock. 
My steering is below the pivot point, so me keeping my foot on the rudder pedals is what locks the motor down. Um, it makes the rigging simple and it works really well. So now we come on around the corner here. Our speed control has our forward off reverse. We can go forward right there. Then we have a potentiometer that's going to control the speed. The potentiometer is a, a soft start and will let you go from as slow as you like all the way up to the full speed. So here's our potentiometer. We're gonna turn it down like so. Then here's our reverse. Same thing, obviously just gonna go the other direction. Kill switch right here in excellent proximity to the paddler. That has enough stretch and you could extend it if you wanted to be able to stand up. Uh, this is an excellent kayak for standing in, though I don't. I use it for Lake Tahoe. I'm using it for trolling. Now the last thing I'm gonna say before I let you go, because this video is getting very long, is cost analysis. It cost me $2,600 to put this together. Battery, motor, rigging, every nut and bolt. But point is, that is significantly lesser expensive than the options pre-built with a motor that don't even come with a battery. If you're gonna get the awesome run times, half of what they are charging you for is that lithium iron phosphate technology. All right, you guys, ask me any questions you like. Tell me what you think. Kind of a long video. Uh, if you toughed it out to the end, thanks very much for watching. Tight lines, Yak Fisher out.